Hey everyone, this is Charles. Welcome back to the channel. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at using Ansible within Eve NG. Ansible is used for various automation functions within modern networking. Inside of the CCNP Enterprise track, we're told that we need to have a cursory knowledge of things like Ansible and to be able to understand and describe the functions. But if you look at something like the DevNet track, for example, we need to get much deeper into tools such as Ansible. I've been using this in my own home lab with my Eve and G instance, so I thought this would be a great opportunity to give you some exposure if you're not familiar with that and to take a look at how we can perform some simple Cisco automation with this tool. First, I want to explain some important characteristics and features of Ansible, and then we'll take a practical look at this in a lab environment. Let's jump in and take a look. Ansible is essentially a software tool that provides a way for us to automate device support and configuration. Now, this can be used for a variety of things. It's super flexible, and we commonly see that used in application deployment server and workstation updates, network device configuration management, and much, much more. Pretty much anything that a systems admin does on an ongoing daily, weekly, or monthly basis, we can automate that using Ansible. One of the great things about Ansible is that it doesn't require any agent software, and that means that we don't have to configure anything on our devices that we want to manage in order to use it, so it's super easy to deploy. If you contrast this with a tool like Puppet, Puppet is agent-based, and that means Puppet requires an agent to be installed on every device that we want to manage with Puppet. If you think about a typical iOS device, such as a router or a switch, we can't really just install an agent software on those devices. So we need a different solution than what Puppet has to offer. Puppet does have a variation called Bolt, and this is agentless, but in general, when we think about Puppet, we think of that more as a configuration management tool, whereas Ansible can do that, plus also take care of the provisioning and deployment of infrastructure. So Ansible is kind of at the forefront of automation and DevOps, but it's also useful to everyday users as well. Ansible is completely free and it's owned by Red Hat, who makes lots of great open source software that's free, including their Cent OS Linux distro, which is something else I'll be using in just a bit. Ansible can be installed pretty much onto any Linux distro, including Mac OS. Another characteristic of Ansible is that this solution uses a push model as opposed to a pull model. Pull models such as Puppet, which we mentioned earlier, they use agent software to pull configurations from a master server. Ansible's push model means that it pushes out configurations to the managed nodes. Within Ansible, there are two categories of devices. We have a control node and we have managed nodes. You can probably guess what falls into these categories. The control node is simply a computer that runs Ansible. There must be at least one control node, obviously, but we can also have a backup control node. And a managed node is any device being managed by that control node. Ansible works by connecting to managed nodes on a network, which could be a router, a switch, a client, a server, basically whatever you're configuring. So Ansible will connect to the managed node and send a small program called an Ansible module to that node. Modules are what do the heavy lifting within Ansible. Ansible has many modules that you can import as you need them, including one that we're going to be looking at today called the iOS command module. Ansible executes these modules over an SSH connection most commonly using SSH keys to provide access to these managed nodes. In a bit, we'll look at my own lab and we'll do just that for our Ansible devices. Now again, we're looking at this from the perspective of Cisco iOS, but this is very broad in what it can affect. We can use Ansible for configuring Windows machines. We can use that for AWS deployments, for Azure. You can basically manage your entire infrastructure with Ansible. So the modules are what we push out to accomplish tasks, and the way that we accomplish these is through something called a playbook. A playbook is a configuration file that gives instructions for what we want to do on a managed node. The playbooks in Ansible are written in YAML format. The big advantage of YAML 
is that it's a human readable standard that we use for writing configuration files. It relies on indentations for its structure, as we'll see in a moment when we look at an example of this. YAML isn't a programming language. That's important to point out. It's actually a data serialization language. So in other words, it's just a way that we can translate structured data in a way that allows us to send it into a memory buffer. So YAML files simply store information. Now, although we're going to look at a pretty basic playbook today, we can certainly make those very complex with all kinds of conditions and variables. Typically though, our Ansible modules are doing all of the work. So our playbooks themselves will more often than not be fairly brief depending on what we're doing. Even if they aren't brief, they will at least be concise and intuitive. Let's get into my lab now and let's take a look at this in action. So you can see I have a pretty simple topology here for this demonstration. I've got a couple of routers connected to one another. I also have those connected to a management switch and that management switch you'll see on the left hand side is connected to a Linux server. In this case, I have sent OS 8 running on that Linux server. Doesn't have to be that distribution. Uh, that's the one I chose just because Red Hat who has created Ansible has also created sent OS 8. So I just went with that. Additionally, on the other side, on the right hand side of your screen, you'll see that we have a cloud called net. So we have a network instance here. And in order to add that on the left, if I expand my menu and I go to add an object, one of the options that we have are network. And under here, you can see that I have the prompt to add a new network. And that's where that cloud instance came from. And if I actually, let's see if I can right click on this cloud instance that I have and choose edit, so you'll see that at the moment, the type is set to management cloud zero. And that is what has bridged all of my devices connected to this cloud node out to the public internet. In other words, it's bridged my devices onto the same subnet that the VM itself is on. So once I did that, I connected my management switch into that. I connected my Linux box into that and my management switch is giving me access to my router one and router two nodes from my Linux box. So that's what I've done here. Pretty simple to connect everything up. Again, a really simple example here. This gave me internet access from my Linux box. And again, you don't have to leave that bridge. It's probably not a good idea to leave that bridged. You don't want to leave your server exposed to the public internet. So once you get everything installed on the Linux box, including your Ansible modules, then you can disconnect that from the public internet. Let me get us connected now into my Linux box, the Linux box that we see here in my even G topology. I am inside of sent OS eight. I'm connected into that Linux box in even G. When you click that Linux box, it's going to launch a VNC viewer connection. And that's what I have here. Again, in my case, sent OS eight doesn't have to be that, but this is one of the distros that is available for free to install within even G it's very stable. Obviously it works very well with Ansible because they're both Red Hat products. Now I do want to mention here that sent OS eight is end of life in 2021. So if you're using this in a production environment, you're probably going to want to look for something else that offers support, but in a lab environment, sent OS that is available for even G is totally fine. In this instance, once we're in here, I'm just going to go ahead and open up my terminal. And just like you would do with any newly deployed Linux distro, you would obviously want to update your packages. So if you're not familiar with that in Linux, by the way, sent OS has some really great documentation steps on their website that will walk you through all those necessary updates. And they have a documentation section specifically on how to install Ansible. If you're all up to date, you would simply use the command sudo DNF. DNF being a package manager and installer that's built into CentOS, and you would say install Ansible. That would be the command that you would want to use. So that's going to install Ansible. It's going to install other dependency packages as well, such as some necessary Python libraries. Ansible is built on Python, so that's the reason for that. I've already done all that legwork for us. Once that completes, you accept the packages and you install those, then Ansible is in place. We can verify that by saying Ansible version. 
and you'll see that I am currently running Ansible 2.9.15. That's the most recent version at the moment. So for the time being, I have IP addressing in place for these two routers. From my Linux box, I can reach those routers at 192.168.0.50 and 192.168.0.60. Now, I don't have DNS running in this network. So in my case, I won't be able to reach these devices by their host name. That could be nice to do. So me personally, one thing that I like to do is I like to go into my local host file and I like to add entries for each of those devices. The Linux host file essentially acts like DNS and it's going to allow me to map domain names or host names to IP addresses. Again, you, we don't have to do that. That's just something that I prefer to do. So I am going to go into our Linux terminal here. I'm going to change into the directory where that host file is located. So I'm going to say CD Etsy, and then I'm gonna say sudo to escalate the privileges. I'm gonna use nano, nano being a built-in file editor, and I'm gonna say hosts file. I need to give my password. And so then it opens up my host file into a text editor. And what we can do here, I can simply add host name to IP address mappings in here, just to make things a little easier for me. So I'm gonna go at the bottom of the file. I'm gonna say 192.168. 0.50 for R1. So that maps the IP address 192.168.0.50 to the host name R1. Underneath that, we can do the same for R2, which is at 0.60, and we will say R2 for that. Now I can hit Control X on my Mac. You'll see at the bottom, we are prompted, uh, do we want to save this? I'll say yes. It asks me the file name that I want to write that to. I'm gonna leave it the same just by hitting enter and we land back at our terminal. Now we can take a look at that by saying cat hosts, cat being short for concatenate. So this is a way that we can view the file directly in the terminal without opening that in a file editor. So that looks good. Let's make sure that we can actually reach these devices. Let's try to ping R1. That works, you can see. Let's try to ping R2. That looks good as well. So looks like we have connectivity to both of our routers. When we use our Ansible modules, we use SSH to send those modules to an iOS device. So at the moment on these two routers, I don't have an SSH configuration. So we do need to take care of that. And if you, you can see that if I say SSH Charles at R1, you can see the connection is refused. So that means we need to set up SSH. So let me jump onto our actual iOS command line here on our routers. Let's go first to router one and let's go under global configuration mode. I'm just gonna create a very simple SSH setup. I'm gonna first create a user. So I'll say username, Charles. I'm gonna set privilege level 15. I'll say secret. Cisco one, two, three. So that is R1. Let's go to R2 and let's do the same thing. Username Charles, privilege level 15, secret Cisco one, two, three. Just a very simple username. So now let's do just a very simple SSH configuration here on router one. Let's say IP domain hyphen name. I'll just say cisco.com. Uh, we need to generate our RSA keys as well. So we'll say crypto key generate RSA. And I'm going to use SSH version two. So we do need a modulus that's larger than 768. If we don't create a modulus or a key size, in other words, if we don't create that key size at least 768 bits, then when we try and enable SSH version two, we're gonna get an error. And by the way, you can see that the default in our brackets is 512. So if we just choose the default, it's not going to be sufficient for SSH version two. So in my case, I'm just gonna double that to 1024 and I'll hit enter. You can see it generated those keys and you can see it tells us SSH 1.99 has been enabled. That means we have support for SSH version one or version two. Let's jump over 
on router two. And let's do the same thing over here. We'll set our domain name, cisco.com. We'll say crypto key generate RSA. And I will choose 1024 on this side as well. It's gonna generate our keys. So that looks good. Now, uh, as I said, you can see that SSH, it says SSH 1.99 has been enabled. So we have backward compatibility with SSH version one at the moment. If we want to explicitly allow version two, we can say IP SSH version two to do that. And I'm gonna do that on router one as well. So we're forcing that to use the SSH version two. Let's also allow SSH access over our VTY lines. That's gonna be necessary if we want Ansible to be able to connect. So I'm gonna say line VTY, I'll do zero through 15. I wanna say login local in this case to use my local user, transport input, and I'm gonna limit that to SSH. So that's all set. Let's go to R2 and we'll go under line VTY zero through 15. Login local, we'll say transport input, and I'll say SSH. So I'm limiting that to SSH. So now let's go back to Linux. Let's go back to our Linux instance and let's arrow up. Let's try that SSH command once more. Uh, you'll see that we do get a different message this time. We're asked if we want to continue. I will say yes and hit enter. Uh, it tells us it's permanently added the RSA key for this device to the list of known hosts. That's fine. I'll say Cisco one, two, three, and we are into the router. We can do show IP interface brief. That's all good. Let's log out. Let's make sure and test R2 as well. We can say yes again, Cisco one, two, three, and we are likewise in on router two. So that's great. So now we have achieved SSH connectivity between our Linux box and our routers. So now let's start looking uh, specifically at Ansible. Let's go to, let's change the directory to Etsy forward slash Ansible. And let's use an LS command to see a list of those files in there. And first thing, let's look at our Ansible hosts file. Nano hosts, so Ansible has its own hosts file. And you can see that I've already done some work in here inside this host file. I already have a list of the hosts that I want to manage with Ansible. So at the top, notice I have a heading uh, and it says routers in straight brackets. And underneath that, I have a list of my individual managed nodes. So if I had more than two routers in my topology, obviously that would be a much longer list. So in just a bit, when we run an Ansible playbook, you'll see that in that playbook, we're able to define which hosts that we want to affect with that playbook. And those hosts are referenced from this host file that we're looking at. By default, this group name at the top, if we don't specify a group name, if we just have a list of our hosts, there are going to be two default groups in Ansible, and those are called all and ungrouped. So if we define a playbook to run against all hosts, then obviously that's gonna be every host. Uh, but if we run that against ungrouped hosts, that's gonna run that against hosts that obviously don't have a group defined for those. So in my case, both of my routers, R1 and R2, belong to a group called routers. So when I run an Ansible playbook, I can choose individual hosts inside that playbook by saying R1 or by saying R2, or if I want to affect all of those, I can just use my group name routers. So that's the way that we can group our items for uh, just easier referencing inside of our playbooks. With a larger network, we probably have many more groups than we see here. We might have a group called switches that might look like this. We might have a group called switches. We might have SW1, SW2, and so on. And we might have a group called servers that we can indicate by the host name or by the IP address. 
Uh, and we create a new group just by leaving a space in between those. That denotes the end of a group. So in this file, you can see an example of how we could continue to add on to that, or we might create different groups for other devices. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these out of here at the moment because I obviously don't need those. Uh, and I'll also point out that there are multiple ways that we can organize this host file. Uh, we can have multiple formats. This is just a very simple example. Uh, instead of host names, we could also place the IP address in here. If I hadn't edited my local Linux host file, remember the first thing I did was to edit that to resolve IP addresses to host names. If I hadn't done that, then we could do that here inside of our Ansible host file. We could go here beside, for example, R1, and we could say Ansible underscore host equals 192.168. .0.50. So if we don't want to edit our local host file, completely acceptable to go in here and to define those in this manner. The thing that that bypasses for me is by creating those in my main local host file, I don't have to go in here and have a lot of different IP addresses put into here with my different groups. So again, either way is acceptable. It's just a matter of preference really and a matter of what works best for you. So multiple ways to configure that. Again, I'm just gonna leave what I already have here in place. I'm going to exit. I'm gonna say no. So I'm gonna exit without saving and we're back to our terminal now. So the modules in Ansible, they do the heavy lifting. Uh, you can think of these as self-contained scripts that Ansible will run on your behalf. Since we simply reference modules within our YAML playbooks, that makes our playbooks much simpler to build out. We don't have to go in and configure a lot of logic in there. We're just referencing certain uh, task modules. Depending on what you do with Ansible, again, they have an entire library of modules. You can find that documentation on their website and they tell you exactly how to import those into your Ansible. Really, really simple to do. Recent versions as I have here, that comes with the Cisco iOS module already built in. So you're ready to start creating playbooks for Cisco right out of the gate. Let's again say LS to take a look inside this directory. And you can see that I have an additional directory that's listed in blue here called playbooks. Uh, I created that directory. Uh, so that's where I save my playbooks that affect my managed hosts. So let's go into that directory. Ansible playbooks. And I have a couple of different YAML files in there at the moment. The .yaml files, by the way, are the playbooks. Remember, those are in YAML format. So let's start with taking a look at ipv6-routing.yaml. We'll take a look at the structure of this particular playbook. And the first thing you see is that we start our playbooks here at the top with a series of three dashes. With a YAML file, that signals the start of a YAML document. Uh, below that, we have the name. This is gonna be the name of our playbook that shows up. That doesn't have to be the same name as our file name. This is just a descriptive name that we give that. And when we run this in a moment, you'll see that whatever name that we've designated here is what's gonna show up in our terminal as we're running this playbook. So this just lets us know which playbook is running at the moment. Below that, we have the line for hosts. And this, again, is where we tell the playbook which hosts we want to affect. In my case, in this instance, I've chosen the group name routers. Remember, I created that group name in brackets in my Ansible host file. So this is going to run against all of the hosts that are in that routers group. Any commands that I specify inside this YAML file is gonna run against both router one and router two. The next line you'll see is gather underscore facts. That is set to false at the moment. So this turns off an automatic module that is in Ansible called gather facts. If we don't set that to false, then it's going to automatically run. And what that's used to do, it's used to gather variable information about remote hosts, 
Uh, and that's when your playbooks get more involved. So in my case, I, I don't need that here. In this example, I've turned that off. Now we can leave it on. It won't break anything. It just takes maybe seven seconds longer to run a playbook. In the case of this network, it won't break anything, but I just simply don't need it. So I turned it to false in this case. Under that, the connection method is set to local because we're on the local network. Uh, then next, we have a section identifying our variables. In my case, I'm using a variable called CLI, uh, a standard Ansible variable. And underneath that, I have nested my SSH username and my password along with a timeout value. Next is where we see tasks. This is where we define the actual tasks of our playbook. So we can have multiple tasks defined here and we could give each of those their own name. So we have a name for both the playbook in here and we have a name for the actual tasks inside. So when we run this, we're first gonna see that we are running the play IPv6 globally enable. Then it's gonna go to this task and it's gonna say, okay, we're running the task global config setting at the moment. And below that, you can see I referenced that iOS module. This little iOS module is the built-in module that I mentioned within Ansible. And again, they have various modules that you can import and use. So under this section, that's where we call out that we're using iOS configuration. This module, this iOS config module, that's gonna take care of placing us into the appropriate configuration mode, whether that's global configuration mode or interface configuration mode. It's gonna do that so that it can execute the commands that we've specified underneath that. Nested underneath that, we are referencing the CLI variable section so that it knows to use that username and password that's identified up there. If we didn't do that, by the way, we can definitely specify our login credentials in this section as well. We don't have to set those as a variable. Uh, I choose to do that because if you're running multiple tasks, that keeps you from having to list your username and password over and over and over. You can just simply reference back to this CLI variable. And then below that, we see our lines section. And the lines section underneath that is nested our actual iOS commands. So these are the exact same iOS commands that you would use in the command line. So you can probably guess what this one is doing. The command that we have listed is IPv6 unicast hyphen routing. So we are simply in this very, very simple playbook, we are just simply enabling IPv6 routing globally on our routers. That is the correct iOS command for that. And then below that, we have register print output. Uh, that is an optional command. That's simply going to return information about what happened on the routers back into our terminal after this task is complete. So that's it. It's really fairly simple. It may be a little overwhelming all at once like that, but as you can see, a lot of this is fairly intuitive and you can copy this file, add your own commands in here. So it's, it's not that tough to get up and going. Let's actually exit here. And just to show you at the moment, let me jump over to our routers. So basically what I'm doing here is I'm making sure the IPv6 unicast hyphen routing command isn't currently found anywhere in my running configuration and it's not. So we don't have global IPv6 routing enabled at the moment. Let's go back into Ansible and let's run this playbook now. And we run a playbook by saying Ansible hyphen playbook. And we follow that with the name of the YAML file that we want to run, which is IPv6 hyphen routing dot YAML. We're going to hit enter. When we do that, we're going to see the name of our play displayed. So you see our play is named IPv6 global enable. We see it's currently running the task global configuration setting. And once that completes, we're gonna see a summary. Notice inside the task section, we see we're told that it changed router one and it changed router two. So this is the result of the register print output command. Again, that was, if you remember, that was an optional section of our playbook. 
We don't have to leave that in there, but that will just display the information that we see here. If we do leave it in there, letting us know that the configuration was changed. Uh, at the bottom, we have what's called the play recap. You see that section listed here. And you can see that we're told, for example, on router one, the okay status, meaning that everything went okay. And we see that it is listed as a one for changed. That means the configuration was changed. So let's go and verify that. Let's jump back over to one of our routers. We'll arrow up again, say show run pipe to section IPv6 unicast. We do see that in our running configuration. Now we also see an additional confirmation here. We see a syslog message letting us know we had a configuration change from the user Charles on VTY line zero. So that looks good. That worked for us. That's just as we would expect to see. Let's go back to our Ansible file and I'll give you a look at what happens if we run that again and it doesn't need to make any changes. We will likewise get a, another play recap and we'll be able to see that no changes were made. And now you can see that rather than saying changed, we just have the okay message. Everything was okay, meaning they were reachable, but you see that changed equals zero. So no configuration changes were made in this case. So that's a look at using Ansible within Eve and G to affect some Cisco devices. I hope you found this content useful and I want to thank you sincerely for watching.